rhymes in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Strap my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be going over the do's and you don'ts on your BMW E60. I've been getting asked a lot of questions lately regarding these E60s or what you should and shouldn't do and if you need this and you need that. So I'm just here to clarify a few things of what you should and shouldn't do because I want to help a lot of you guys out because a lot of you have been frying your ECUs, uh, you've been asking me a lot of questions. So I'm just going to go over the common things and obviously we are going to be back with the, we are doing a video with the E60. Um, as you guys will see here, I wanted to do another one with this car as I feel a lot of you I ain't really interested in the Mini, you won't be as obviously as you guys know the Mini is for other people so let's get back to what you should and shouldn't do on your BMW E60 and I'm going to show you what you need to be aware of and not to do on these cars. So the first one guys, this is one that I keep getting asked a lot and a lot of people keep having this problem. Jump starting these cars with another bigger engine car for instance a v8 which requires a lot more power or another bm with which requires has a lot more modules or jumping it with any kind of newer technology car when you jump these cars a lot of people don't realize when well, the moment you pump power these up with jump cables or any jump pack from a dead battery these cars have a lot of modules that wake up so the moment you even touch them on here the cables to another car they take a lot of power to wake up all the modules before you can jump start it what that does, that sends a voltage spike straight through the whole car and it will kill off your modules. Now, what happens is you'll get the other person usually, and it's what a lot of people keep asking me, they had their friend jump their car and he revved the engine and he kept revving it. Now, what that's doing, that's in turn sending a lot of voltage because you're making the alternator run very quick and it's, turned, it's sending more voltage through the car, which then directs the current straight to your vehicle. Now, when that sends it straight to your vehicle, especially being a BM with all the modules, that is going to just destroy all your modules. So in turn, it went up frying your DME. And if you've got the micro power module, it will destroy the micro power module. This is why a lot of people end up with a central electronics failure because you cannot jump start these cars. You need to get a portable jump pack. Do not try and use jump leads on these cars. It will fry the DME on these and it will throw your electronics. So that's something you need to be aware of. And I'm telling you, do not, and I mean it, do not put them the wrong way. A lot of people end up putting a live on here and putting a negative on there. That's the wrong thing you want to do because I know a lot of people buy these cars and it's missing this cap so you don't know what's positive. What's the positive? I'm warning you right now, do not put these on the wrong way. If you put them on the wrong way, consider your car finished immediately because they will uh, send voltage the wrong way and damage your whole car. I see this with a lot of people and it's something I keep getting asked, even on the mini side, do not do that. They don't like it. These cars are very prone to that failure. They do not like being jump started. This is why you have to keep the battery on top of the battery and you have to carry a portable jump pack around with you. Do not try and use another car to jump start this car because I know a lot of people don't want to fork out for a battery and they're just using another car constantly to jump start it, jump start it till they can afford to buy a new alternator. Don't do that. Just do not do that. Just go and replace whatever's needed. These cars don't like it. All you're doing is you're going to damage all the electronics. You will fry the DME and you will fry the micropower module inside the car. The next one, guys, I get asked a lot on the E60 is if they should change the radio on this car. My best advice, leave the radio alone. If you change it for the CIC, that's different. But changing it to your normal standard radio, which means removing all this to fit a blanking plate, to lose the screens, have some stupid radio in here when most of these cars come with Bluetooth, Everyone just wants AUX or AUX USB. Your best bit to do is to just go and buy this, the Pure DAB, which has Bluetooth music streaming, which has Bluetooth built in. I don't have the mic because I'm using the Bluetooth on here. I don't really need to use the Bluetooth on that, but it does come with Bluetooth if your car don't have Bluetooth. Leave these screens alone. Another thing I get asked is if they can change the big screen. Yes, you can if you've got the small wire drive, but is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. Don't change to the big screen when you've got no navigation. It's not worth it at all. If you're going to change it, get this from a 2006 and make sure it comes from a 2006 car and get the CCC. They are very, very reliable. They didn't have the issues like the ones prior to that. These were built solid and they have no issues. So in that sense, you can just get the one from a 2006 and have no problems. If you have got a two underneath a 2006 car and you are having a problem with the micro power module, get a 2006 one and it should be fine. 
but the micropower module is usually the culprit for the iDrive's frying. And another common problem with them is people, like I said, jump starting the car, it will fry the iDrive. Because as you guys know, the moment you put that on, the iDrive boots up. That can take days that zap a lot of power the moment you put jump leads on these cars from dead. The next one while I'm here, guys, is going to be the sport button. Now, you guys know I see a lot of people, and you guys know as well, a lot of people fitting the sport button. Do I think it's worth it? No, I don't. I fitted this, which is the XLR race chip. I hardly use it. It's basically the exact same thing controlling the throttle. You guys know. It's not worth it. I hardly ever use this thing at all. It's just there. It looks good. You know, if the car was to sell, then it will go with it. It's there. It looks good. I've done little subtle mods like that. Do I need to really cut a hole in here to make a sport button? No. What gains are you really going to get from a petrol? You're not. It just doesn't seem worth to pull it on here. If this was a 550 IVA engine, I would think very enough. Or if it was the M5, which m 5s already got the override for sport, it's different. But this... No, it just doesn't make sense. Even this itself, it's good. You know, it adjusts the throttle, but is it really something that I'm going to use all the time? No, it's not something I've ever used since having this car. To be fair, if I'm honest with you, I've used it a couple of times, but that's about it. I don't feel, I feel like you've got the kick down and you've got the override on sport. So I really override it on sport if I need to. I don't really use that. All that does is increase the rev range. The next one I just want to speak to you guys about as well. It's retrofitting the heated seats. A lot of people always ask me to retrofit them. I'm telling you now, don't retrofit them. They are a nightmare to retrofit. The cabling, you don't want to be messing with the cabling on these cars. Trust me on that. And I'm going to go back to the stereo quickly. People are trying to fit your Sony Bluetooth stereos, as you saw on my E46. You don't want to be doing that because that involves cutting the wires. As you guys probably are not aware, these run the fiber optic lines inside. If you touch anything on that system, you'll end up with SOS errors. You'll end up with a lot of errors regarding the CD changer and everything because they're all linked on a fiber optic connection with the Bluetooth module. You cut any wires here, you need to get fiber optics, which kill them off, which are like blanks, which blank off the fiber optics itself. If you're going to change anything on this car, I know they've just started making a new screen unit, which you can plug in this plug and play. But even that, would I do it? No. Like I said, I'm very different to a lot of people. I like to keep my cars standard, as a lot of you guys know. I don't mind doing the subtle mods, but anything other than subtle mods, I like to keep the car original and the way it is. I'm not one to be changing this and changing that. The next one I want to get into, guys, is the steering wheel. Now, I had two guys actually ask me this, if they should change their steering wheel to a Momo steering wheel. Now, I have no idea why anyone would want to do that, to be honest with you. Why you'd want to fit a small steering wheel to this car. I don't know why you'd want to take an E60 to a track or even make it into a track vehicle. Now, my advice is don't change your steering wheel. You're going to end up with a lot of errors. The airbag will trigger here. You have the airbag light and these are not the type of cars you want to be modifying like that. Take my word on that. You just want to keep it very sweet, very simple. Keep the car looking nice. BMW built the steering wheel with sport in mind. These steering wheels are very, very nice. Why upgrade them? You don't have to. There's no, it doesn't make sense to change the steering wheel for a Momo steering wheel. I think the steering wheel looks, uh, looks to be honest, absolute. The dogs, you know what? You know, I don't want to um, say you can't fit it, but I'm saying to you, if you fit it, you're going to end up with a load of lights. Your probably indicators ain't going to work. Your electric steering wheel, because they're all located on the squib, your steering wheel controls will go. But most of you, if you are going to make a track car, then none of that is going to matter to you anyway. But I'm just saying, I wouldn't personally change steering wheel and I'd really wouldn't advise doing it either because it's not something I, I think is going to look good in this kind of car how big it is the next one is the m5 cluster now i keep getting people ask me about the m5 cluster should we can i upgrade to the m5 cluster of course you can yes you can upgrade to the m5 cluster should you no because it's going to give you no difference why would you want to make your car into something it ain't just go and buy an m5 I mean, this cluster is perfectly fine. And if you want to do that, then you have to know how to clear the mileage. You can't just fill it on. You could, but then you're going to have a tamper dot. Is it worth it for you? No, it's not. Is it worth it for me? Well, of course it is because I've got the heads up display. With all that, with the sport hood, I, it was, it's way worth it for me. But do I want to do that? No, I don't. I don't want to do that because realistically, I don't see any point in doing that. I'm not trying to make my car something it's not. It's an M Sport and not an M5. I don't need it to be an M5. If I wanted an M5, we'd go and purchase an M5. But the cluster, you can change them. You can change them for any cluster, but you need to clear the mileage and clear the data from the used car. Something, again, I can do. Another one I get asked, guys, is about tuning these engines. Everyone always asks me, should they tune it? Should they remap it? 
My honest answer is no. Do not tune these engines. You're going to get very, very little BHP. The maximum BHP, and as you guys know, I do the remapping. I have the remapping software. I'm planning to remap the Mini. This car will only gain like 20 BHP. Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. On a petrol, you're not going to feel it. It's not a turbocharged car. It's not a supercharged car. Do not go remapping the M52 engine. You're going to get no gains whatsoever. Leave it the way it is. These are two, minus 258 BHP. A standard, I know a lot of you ain't because you only got the one disc or something if you don't even have any discs. You know, so it's lower power, but mine has the three discs. I don't need any more power than that. Like I said, this car is hardly used now. Um, but tuning them. I do not believe in tuning them. This could cause more stress and more components to fail. A lot of you are already getting cheap out on parts and can't afford the parts on these as it is. So why go and tune it and make this car even worse and make parts fail quicker than it already is? Leave it alone. Do not bother remapping it. You're going to get no gains whatsoever. You guys will probably say, but I've got a K&M Performance Air filter and the exhaust. Yes, I did that them bits because I wanted this car to be different. And that's what I did, but I haven't gone tuning the engine. I don't see the point in it. Like I said, I fitted the XLR race chip and that is okay what it does, but is it great? It's not great. No. Like I said, it was sent to me though. I didn't splash out money to go and pull it on the car. It was sent to me, you know? So that's another thing, guys. Do not think of tuning this engine. So the next one, guys, I want to get into is programming. Now, a lot of people keep asking me about the voltage stabilizers. Now, I have been working with a company in the UK who have helped me develop a stabilizer. Well, actually I've helped them develop a stab voltage stabilizer, which has basically got the same internals as BMW dealerships use their self. People keep asking me if I've got them because they want to program their car. Can they use them? How do they use them? They need one from programming. Let me just get straight into that. If your program win KFP, you don't need a voltage stabilizer. If your program with Vista P, you need a voltage stabilizer because it won't even let you program without the voltage being stable. Now the ones I've developed hold the voltage stable and they've been being used so far and they've been fine, they've been working perfect. Now, that being said, I know these will go on to and keep going for many years to come and they'll have no problems because I've been using one myself and I've had no issues. Like I said though, you do not need one for um, Wink FP, you only need one for ISTP. If you're going to use ISTP, which I don't see the point because you're updating all the modules and you're going to get no gain. If you try and do that on an E90, you're looking to brick the FRM module because it goes the wrong. It's a common problem with BMW. They put the wrong firmware on ISTP and it ends up bricking the FRM module. Nobody knows why. Of course, I can recover that. If you guys were to do that, I can do the cast recovery as well. But it's a big job and it's an expensive job. Is it worth to run ISTP to brick them? No, you're going to get no gains from their modules. The only modules you gain from are the DME, EGS, and the fuel pump. That being said, if you try and not use a stabilizer on the Wing KFP, you can do just that. You can update the gearbox and the DME without using a voltage stable or any kind of power. That's if your battery is good. If your battery ain't good, you can use a battery charger. But the moment the fuel pump kicks in, that battery charger won't be good won't pump hard enough to keep the battery maintained from what the fuel pump is draining. The fuel pump drains a lot of power out of that car. So be warned of that. It will take a lot of power the moment the fuel pump kicks on and it will drain all your battery current immediately and when KFP will probably stop and it'll probably brick the module. And that's why I strongly advise you to use a proper voltage stabilizer. Like I said, I've flashed many, many cars without even nothing on with Wing KFP and I've had no issues. Why? I make sure that the owners had the battery replaced, the battery is new. If the battery is new, you can flash the DME and gearbox and fuel pump with no issues whatsoever and get it all done. Like I said, I did all mine without a battery charger hooked up when I updated all my car. And I never had no charger hooked up. I didn't have to because I knew the battery was good on it anyway. But like I'm saying, if you know your battery's crap or you don't, you don't feel confident with it, you need to have a charger on that car. But like I said to you, a battery charger is not going to maintain the current needed for that car while updating. If you draw ahead and update the iDrive or you can forget it, your battery charger is not going to hold charge at all. That's with Ring KFB or it's the P. Just completely forget it. It ain't going to work. Another one I get asked on this car a lot on the M52 is can you reuse the bolts for the valve cover and for the oil filter housing gasket? I'm going to tell you right now, no you cannot. These bolts on these engines are torque to yield, you cannot use them, uh, don't try and be cheap. They're only 20 quid to buy for a new set of bolts for the valve cover. Just buy a new set, they're torque to yield which means once they're torqued down they stretch down with heat. Now once they've been stretched down and once you release them, 
they cannot be reused because they won't talk that you can't talk them down again otherwise they'll snap in the head so make sure you buy a new set of bolts for your all foot housing gasket if you're going to replace it and also your valve cover because if you don't they won't talk down properly and then you'll be leaking again and then you'll be back there trying to do it again and then the more times you keep trying to reuse them bolts they're going to snap in the head and you don't want that yes they are easy to get out but only if you know how to get them out so I would not advise using the same bolts for this engine. You know, I don't still understand why I'm still getting asked these silly questions, you know, about this car. You cannot be cheap with these cars. When you take one thing, everything needs replacing. That's just how it is on these cars. So I'm telling you guys, make sure you replace the bolts. The next one I want to get to, guys, is the grills. Now, you guys saw I took the black grills off and put the chrome grills back on. I have no understanding why people want to take this nice chrome look of BMW, which BMW took a long time to design them, use this chrome idea because it looked more luxury and then go and put black grills on and make the car look cheap and tacky. As you guys know, the black ones usually come from China. They look cheap, they look tacky, hence why I took them off and put the original silver ones back on. I don't know why so many people want to still insist on putting black grills on. Mercedes, Chrysler and Mini all use chrome parts. Why? They're a luxury brand. They want to be different. The same as Bentley, the same as Rolls Royce. They all use chrome because it makes the car look luxury. You don't get chrome on a Ford. You don't get chrome in on these kind of cars. They chose to use these chrome grills because they have presence. They look nice when you're looking at them from the front. Why I go and put it into black? It makes the cars look very ugly. It doesn't make it look nice. It doesn't make it look subtle. It doesn't make it look anything. That's the whole reason why I removed it and put the silver ones back on. These, I believe, make the car look 10 times better than the black. And like I said, that's just my personal opinion. You guys know I'm very, very different to other people. I want my A60 to stand out from the rest. I don't want to be like a lot of people putting black grills on my car. Um, I didn't like it. I just didn't like the look of it. I didn't like even when it was sitting on my drive, the way it looked with the black grills. Now it looks a lot nicer. It looks like you've got a luxury prestige car. If you want a very basic car, you shouldn't have gone for a BMW. BMW is all about the chrome look. Same as Mercedes. They're all about the same as well. I like the chrome look. I always have and I always will. And that's why I went back to the chrome grills for that reason. Another one I get asked, guys, is people following the owner's handbook of the E60s and E90s with the service interval at 14,000 miles. Now, this is one thing I'm going to state. Do not follow that owner's handbook. Do not service this car at 14,000 miles. BMW did that to make these cars look cheaper to maintain that they didn't need an oil service regularly. They didn't need this regularly. And that's why BMW done that on the handbooks to make it look like this car wasn't going to be a headache to maintain. And it was actually going to be cheaper than any other, any other BMW model out there when these come into production. But do not listen to them intervals. It was just to make, be able to sell these cars for more money with less maintenance. That's all it was. That's what they tried to do. But trust me, guys, do not be doing that. And I'm going to show you on the iDrive what the maintenance schedule is. And you should never listen to it. I change my oil every 4,000 miles. If you've got a diesel, change it every 7,000. That's my best advice. Do not leave it long. Trust me on that. So as you see here, guys, on my iDrive, it still says 9,000 miles to my service. Now, that's usually at 12,000 miles. I've done quite a bit of mileage since I've changed oil on this and I haven't reset it. Now, that is really bad. Now, I know people say petrols can go longer without an oil change. But that isn't me. That, I won't even let it go. It will be changed twice in the mileage that you're seeing there still left. And I'll be resetting that as well. As you see here, there's quite long service intervals. Do not listen to this iDrive. It's set like that. The same as the brake fluid change is every three years. Even the front brake pads, well, they've already been renewed. So it's still got another 20,000 miles. But as you see here, there's a lot of different things which tell you a lot of um, different service intervals. Do not listen to the iDrive and what it states. This thing will tell you basically what BMW want, is basically telling you. But as you see here, it's all different things for the micro filter and everything like that, the spark plug, 60,000 miles, which is quite good considering they, BMW used to say 100,000 miles, 60,000 miles is very good. But then again, like I said, guys, you need to be very careful on this car. Do not believe the eye drive when it tells you that you, you don't wait for the light to come on like many people do saying, uh, engine oil service due, change it at 4,000 miles. Trust me, guys, and to reset it, you just use ISTA, go into CBS reset, and reset the service. That's all you need to do. Now, if you have got a tamper dot on your car, I get asked this a lot, and you've changed the cluster, or you've changed the iDrive, you will not be able to reset anything on the car. You'll have a triangle, a yellow triangle, and that means because basically what's happened, you've changed the module that isn't matched your VIN, and it's still got the data from the previous vehicle on that you need to have cleared out. 
that's a common common problem when you have a warning triangle on there that you need to make sure you get clear to sync up with your combi because the combi and the iDrive work together to get the service information from the combi so if your combi you've changed it and you've got tamper dot it won't correspond with your iDrive so you won't be able to change your mileage interval so make sure you get your mileage wiped out on that cluster so it can match up with your iDrive and that way everything can work properly so there you have it guys i've just gone through all the do's and don'ts when you're when you purchase a bmw e60 and if you own one now as i said to you there's many many things in this video that you guys need to be aware of i've mentioned all of them to you these are the things i do not believe you should be doing to your e60 and if you do you will destroy the modules you can destroy a lot of things inside these cars you've got to remember these cars were very advanced for their time they run on a lot of fiber optics a lot of different modules any kind of plugging up jump pack, um, jump cables to them any kind of changing the radios these are not like the old school cars where you could change it and not get a code these cars will throw a light for everything that's touched on the car you guys are already aware of that so this is my best advice guys and these are the things I believe you should not be doing on your E60. As I said to you about the programming, if you are interested in the voltage stabilizers, I, yes, I do have them. And like I said, they're ready to go now. So please get in contact with me if you do want them. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.